Good morning. Let us prepare ourselves for a time of prayer and worship of God. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You created the day and the night, O oh God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You made summer and winter. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Acts, the first reading um, that is slated during the Easter season and slated specifically for this Sunday. Listen for God's word to us. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. The circumscribed believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited them to stay for several days. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. The Holy Spirit is one of those things that when we're asked to speak about where the Spirit moves, um, it's a mystery. And for the disciples in this early, early part of the church um, post Jesus' ascension, they're trying to figure out, well, what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? And so they're preaching and witnessing, um, just as Jesus has told them to do. And the Holy Spirit falls not just on those who were the people of Israel, but also on the Gentiles. Now, if there were ever two groups that were separated in the early first century, it, it would have been these two. They did not share a whole lot in common. And yet, the Holy Spirit moved there. Which is a reminder to us that we don't control the Spirit. It is always interesting to me how the spirit moves because it, it's absolutely unpredictable and yet it never ceases to surprise us god's spirit moves ever so much broader than we can ever imagine and there are times that we're amazed when it falls on those who we never expected. And so Peter, as he realizes that they've all been baptized in the Spirit, completes this baptism in water. Now, we will soon, we, we had one um, micro-baptism during COVID, which was uh, part of our recorded service we actually recorded it separately with just the family and the godparents. So it was kind of a very, very short thing with very, very, very limited. And we know that we'll have some baptisms coming up that will be more in the church. They'll be different, but they'll be more in the church. But when we baptize, we say as Christians, we're baptized into, um, by water and the Spirit. We're reminded in baptism 
that God calls us before we can ever accept God's call. God calls us from the very beginning. God knows us and loves us. And when we're baptized, we just remember we're part of a larger family. We always say at baptism, our new name, we're baptized in the name um, of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. So that is not different from any other Christian church in anywhere. We're, we all have the same baptismal formula. And then we say that we're baptized and we use just the person's first and middle names because the new surname, the new last name, is the same for Christians everywhere. Precious child of God. And it reminds us of how that spirit ties us together. I went with a, a group of people for about two and a half weeks to Guatemala when I was in my early 20s. We went to visit a seminary and we did a little bit of helping them build things. We led, they led some Bible studies we got to be part of. And one of the things that struck me was that I kept calling them amigos, amigas, friends. And they kept calling us hermanos and hermanas, brothers and sisters. And it was because we were all Christians and that sense that we're all part of the same family. And so at one point I was talking to a, a woman about my age and she said, I will look very forward to seeing you again. And although the church where I was a member made that trip on a yearly basis um, and built some relationships there, I knew I wouldn't be part of the next year. This was a one-time thing for me. I was um, getting ready to leave my job and go into seminary. And I said, oh, I won't be back next year. And the woman said, I'm not worried about that. We are joined in God's spirit and we will meet again, if not on earth, then in God's kingdom. And I was so touched by that, that reminder that God's spirit binds us together with all believers. God's Spirit reminded Peter and the disciples that God's message wasn't just for the people of Israel, but was also for all of God's children throughout the world. Thanks be to God. As part of our morning prayer, we speak the canticle of Zechariah from Luke's Gospel. If you don't remember who Zechariah was, he was a priest and the husband of Elizabeth, the father of John the Baptist. And when God's angel spoke to him and told him, that he, was going, he and his wife were going to have a son. He was so, um, he, he wanted so many answers. He wanted to be right. And so the angel struck him uh, completely mute during the whole time that his wife was carrying John. And when John was born, that's when his mouth was opened and he sang this song. The Lord, the God of Israel, has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. 
The Lord, the God of Israel, has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. Through your prophets of old, you promised to, through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. The Lord, the God of Israel, has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. The Lord God of Israel has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. The Lord, the God of Israel, has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Lord, the God of Israel, has set us free. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us now come before God in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We praise you, God, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wonderful creation. Especially we thank you for the ministry of all the baptized. Those who provide for public safety and well-being those with whom we work or share common concerns, opportunities to share the good news with others, the treasure stored in every human life. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? In a moment of silence, Pray for those things. We dare to pray for others, God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for others in his name. Especially we pray for the church in Asia and the Middle East, those who seek to save the earth from destruction. Those who work for the benefit of others. Those who cannot work today. Understanding to live according to our faith. People of God, pray for those who are in our hearts in this moment of silence. As you cause the sun to rise, O oh God, bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel the shadows of hatred and fear. Give us grace to reflect Christ's glory and let his love show in our deeds, his peace shine in our words, and his healing in our touch, that we all may give him praise now and forever. Amen. And we pray together in the words closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Beloved, have a wonderful day. And I will look forward to join, having you join us here on Facebook Live um, at noon tomorrow for our midday prayer. Have a great day and know that I am praying for you always. <laughs>